morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closer Show. I'm uh, Scott Carson, as always, excited to be here with you this day. Um, one of the great things that uh, I want to share with you today is how you can kind of leverage live events, whether it's a small meetup or a big event like a conference, to really grow your business. Now, give you a little back backstory about this. My business has really dramatically changed in the last eight years, I guess it was, um, in, in, a good, in a good positive way. Obviously, traveling across the country for two years, three years straight will definitely um, drive a lot of traffic to you and kind of help you build a following for you. I don't expect most of you to do that. Now, we all go to a lot of events. We go to a lot of conferences. We go to a lot of summits, expos, whatever you want to call them, note camps. How do you leverage an event to really help you push your business in the stratosphere and or how to take it to the next level, how to really set yourself away apart from everybody else that's at an event to really be a little bit different. So I'll give you a little bit of example on some of the things that I did. So this kind of goes back to 2010, I want to say, or 2011, probably 2010. It was the 2010 Noteworthy Summit when it was noteworthy, not the... Uh, not the warped, mutated creatures become with a noteworthy investment summit, but actually when it was noteworthy, there was about 800 people there. This one was held at the Palms Resort Hotel and Casino there in Las Vegas. Um, it, was a, it was a good chunk. It was actually my first time out there. And I had not, I'd heard about noteworthy beforehand. I had some of my members that were going, had gone to it, spoke at it. I hadn't made it to this. the first time I was going to that event. So I was pretty stoked. And I was just going to listen, going to attend. I was just an average Joe in the crowd. I remember driving the, the airport and actually Jack Sternberg actually called me who Jack used to be the, the runner of the guy that ran that for 29, 30 years. When you talk, he's like, Oh, I would have maybe had you speak, but you know, I can give you a discounted ticket. I'm like, I'll take a discounted ticket. Who wouldn't want that? So I took a discounted ticket. I fly out there. I'm just an average guy sitting in the crowd. And then there was a, a couple of my mentors that were speaking there and I was going there listening and talking and I leveraged it because I met a bunch of people. I grabbed as many business cards as I could that year, okay? Grabbed as many as I could that year to really help my business. Now, there was one key point in that uh, noteworthy, in that convention. There's one key point that really revolutionized my kind of, I leveraged that and that really helped me over the next 12 years. Now, the biggest thing that I did, I like going to, events in there that I'm actually doing something so I can maybe learn a tip or two. I don't like to go stand out in the hallway and network that much, unless of course it's just, I've heard everybody's speech for a couple of times, but there's somebody new. I try to go to listen to them because it's, I can always learn something. Noteworthy is made up of people that are listening. And then you also have a lot of people that stay in the hallways and network and don't really do anything. And a lot of conferences are that way. It's, it's good, but it's also distraction because it's kind of rude to the actual speakers. It's because people are hanging around outside. It's rude to the people inside the rooms because they can hear you speaking. I'm a big proponent. If you're not, you're not in, in talking to a vendor, don't be sitting on the hallway. Go into the rooms and talk or listen to the speakers. That's what they're there for. That's what the attraction is, as we can all agree. But anyway, so there was this one discussion. I give Walter Wolford credit for this. And I'm excited. Walf, Walter is speaking at Note Camp 5.0 here next week because we are literally a week out from it. Up in the cor up, up other corner here, Note Camp 5.0. If you have not bought your tickets to the event, do so, guys, and you'll understand so why I, when I get to that later on. But anyway, I'm in this event. They're talking about marketing and the use of video. Simon White and Walter Wolford are sharing this event about using videos. And this point, this is a while ago, Walter is sharing how he's using video to film all these rental properties, insides and outsides. He actually created a job for his daughter to go do all these videos. And it helped him knowing Jackson, Mississippi, like nobody else. And Jackson, in Jackson, Walter is the king there in Jackson, Mississippi, real estate. If you need help with anything, he's the guy to reach out to. All right. So then anyway, I'm in there listening, and I'm I started using videos in my, you know, my day to day stuff about marketing properties or sharing things that were going on. And so somebody asked if I was using marketing, and, and I raised my hand. I'm like one of the only people in the room besides the two people up there. I was using videos with my deal flow. And I asked a question or two, comment, well, I get swarmed after the event because I asked an interesting question. And I said, yeah, this is great. I'm raising capital. I'm doing something. This is, 
This is eight, nine years ago before it was as prevalent as it was now. Yes, YouTube was around, some other things, but not, not, not many people doing it. I mean, still not a lot of people doing it, but I got swarmed. So I collected as many business cards as I could at that point. And I was probably in the room. I had to literally leave the room because another speaker was coming on 15, 20 minutes later. And there's people still asking me questions about it. So I took as many business cards as I could. Well, I leveraged all those cards with an email that night or the next day um, to them. Hey, it was great meeting you. Love to visit with you. Many of those people became JV partners for me. Um, I also connected with everybody that I could, speaker-wise, anybody that I knew that was there on LinkedIn to expand my LinkedIn connections. And you understand, I think you start to see that those two big things were foundations in building my note business over the next eight years. Uh, also found sources there, talked with sources, um, and did a really great job. So that over the next 12 months, when I came back to Noteworthy, when I was asked to speak in a breakout session, I shared, uh, I don't remember what my discussion was, but I think it was the 10 biggest mistakes I see investors make was my first breakout session in Noteworthy in 2011. Um, it was a full room. It was a full room. And so I gave away a drawing. I did something kind of a little cheeky that not a lot of speakers like or a lot of promoters like. I literally said, hey, if you're drawing, I'll give away some training or gave away some options or gave, gave away in the room. So literally everybody in the room put their business card into my envelope. And there's Jack Sternberg in the back of the room so like just cracking up at me doing this. But that added another 150 people to my database. Okay. 150 note investors that I knew. And so I took their business cards and Steph can vouch for this because Steph, that was Steph's first noteworthy in 2011, I believe. Because it was a bigger event. It was about 600 people or 800 people. I don't remember exactly. But I took those cards and I made those valuable. I sent an email out that night. I scanned them all in my database. They became a part of my database. And some people are still getting my emails today and laughing about this when I, I, I talk to them or run into them from time to time. Um, I ran into a guy the other night that I've known for six, seven years. I haven't seen him in forever, but he still gets my emails. Okay. 2012, Steph corrects me. All right, it was 2012. Sorry, not 2011. Thank you, Miss Goodman. Um, <laughs> um, but as I went to events over the next few years, that was a lot of the same strategy that I used. Anything I could use to collect people's bank, because let's face it, most expos, most summits, the promoters, the people running the event, they are not going to give you the addresses. They're not going to give you the list of contacts. That's a five to $10,000 thing or sponsorship you've got to pay for to get that. And that's why a lot of times you see those sponsorships at 10 grand or a hundred thousand or 50 grand, depending on how big the event is, is usually that big king size or the platinum event uh, sponsor. Um, you know, that's why they get that. You know, they're a big event. They get that. Now they use it for a lot of, they, they get their money back off that. And as Steph likes to say here, keeping the memory blade sharp, that was a great noteworthy event. It was a great noteworthy event. There, yeah, it was a good note of, noteworthy event, but it was even better the next six months, next 12 months, because I leveraged that to sources and buying assets and moving assets, and that helped really build my database. Now, noteworthy over the years, especially the last couple of years, has not, has, last year, I don't think they had an event. This year, it's morphed into something else because Sternberg sold the rights or the naming rights or whatever to the guys that, uh, uh, Note Investor Summit, which is now Noteworthy Investor Summit. It's not been around for five years. It's, it's just a, I guess they've been around for five years, just a different name, slap a, another sticker on the thing, kind of like a NASCAR thing. But anyway, what I'm trying to get as is as we have done events or we've morphed into having our live Noteworthy or our Note Camp, I should say, is that I wanted to create something that would help really leverage people's time, their energy, and really be a benefit to many, many people, okay? Not just a few people that show up, not just to speakers, um, and not just to the experienced people. I wanted to make this valuable for experienced, brand new people, the speakers, the vendors, and stuff like that. Because listen, I don't know about you guys, but when you travel as much and been a vendor at many, so many places, it gets costly to be a vendor, You're usually paying around five grand, 10 grand to be a vendor, or speaker at events sometimes, and then you've got to try to make that up in your sales, okay? Okay? Um, and, and so many vendors, they travel, and then it costs them more than that for travel and setup and booths and, you know, airfare and food and stuff like that, hoping to get business to drive business out of it. And so we, when, I, when uh, Steph and I 
came up with the idea for Note Camp, it was actually coming from a failure of an event. It was coming from an event that we bombed on, that we actually canceled that we were gonna have in Houston, literally dropped about 20, 25 grand on an event in marketing and nobody showed up. It's a different style of event and it was a great idea, but sometimes great ideals are not deliverable, okay? And so our goal was like, okay, let's do something that's different. And as I started talking to vendors and speakers, they were exhausted. Like, uh, you know, they're, people trying to cut back, they're trying to budget, the market is changing. And when I came up with the idea and do uh, the virtual stuff, Steph, you know, <laughs> Steph's like, well, we should do it virtual. You do webinars. Why can't you do a virtual event? And I first argued against it for like 20 minutes. We we're driving to Dallas. And then I, over time, I was like, you know what? You're exactly right. Exactly right. Why can't we do a virtual summit? There's got to be a little bit of technology hacks. And so I got with a couple friends and um, we worked on some ideas. And that's where we came up with Note Camp 5.0 content, actions, marketing, and profit generating ideas. Literally, Driving back from a Houston Lifestyles event, we came up with a name. We had the idea, but we came back from with a name from driving back from Dallas or from Houston, literally in the car on a Sunday morning. And so that's where Note Camp came from. But there were some things that I wanted to do differently about Note Camp. I wanted to make it so that we could leverage people's time, their energy, not be expensive, but really give people and the vendors everything they want in an event. Okay. Uh, as Steph says, uh, think outside the box and keep adapting. Exactly. I would agree to that totally. We had to keep us, think outside the box and keep adapting. So that's why we said, so, okay, so we started reaching out to speakers. We started reaching out, and everybody was excited about doing an online event, especially if it was going to be live, and we could put 200, 300 people online at a time. They were going to love it. So that's what we did. We got a schedule together. We offered some tickets, Okay. Uh, Cedric goes, I remember meeting you at that event in Houston. Exactly. Lifestyles event a couple years ago. Exactly, Cedric. I do remember meeting you at that event. Exactly. Um, we had a booth set up, about seven or eight of us. They're wearing Note Wars t-shirts. I totally remember it. Anyway, so when I when we came up with the idea for Note Camp, we wanted to make it affordable. We wanted to give people an incentive for being there. And we also wanted to help our speakers out and our vendors out. So uh, Eric says you're totally excited. Eric, hi. Thank you this morning, bud. Thanks for sharing that. Totally excited. We got some really good stuff. So that's why we came up with the idea and said, okay. And I've been doing this. I've always been a big advocate of trying to prime the pump uh, for our students so that they network with everybody else. Because I know how valuable it is to network and to grow your database. And as when you get a contact, unfortunately, most of the time you get a business card from an event or a speaking spot and you don't do anything with it. Okay, it goes on your dresser drawer. It goes on your nightstand. It goes in a shoebox. Okay, <laughs> Steph says the context didn't stay in a file or a drawer for us. No, we exactly right. We did not keep them in a file or a drawer. We decided to use them, and so that's what we did. The first thing we said, okay, if everybody shows up to an event and they're around, especially at our live virtual no buying workshops, we would email out the spreadsheet of the attendee list. Everybody, we wanted you to prime the pump. We didn't want you to spend so much time trying to run around and get business cards. We wanted you there in the event learning, talking, asking questions versus trying to run and get business cards because some people do this. So that's what we decided first and foremost. Hey, everybody that shows up is going to get the attendee list. Why is that important? Well, now instead of you just maybe only getting 10 business cards at an event, you now have 300 or 400 or in some cases 1,000 contacts or 700. Um that you can add to your database. And yes, are you giving your information to other people? Yeah, you are, but it's the 21st century. Everybody has your information whether you like it or not, okay? So you might as well have that. Um, Eric, I sure, I would love it if Eric Hyde wants to, you've got, you're saying I want to share my feedback um, and what I love about No Camp. Sure, I would love that. Um, he says here, uh, I want to share my feedback. What I love about No Camp is not all salesy, all content, such a, Valuable weekend for business. You're exactly right, Eric. That's one thing. That's a big thing we wanted to do. We wanted to deliver content. That's what the big C in Note Camp is all about. Content. Don't be wrong. There are speakers that sell stuff at our event, it's, but this is not a sales pitch. And for our speakers, it's got to be worth their time. Also, it's it's a it's a win win if you have people that show up to learn, and then you have speakers that show up to learn, and they provide most of their time giving content. And that's why we require our speakers. Not to give 15 minutes of content and a 60 minute sales pitch because I'll cut them right off. What we do want the people to do is deliver 60 minutes of content. And then I don't care if they've got a class, a workshop, 
uh, or a program or software, I'm fine with that because they've delivered for an hour, okay? And then they've got 15 minutes to, you know, sell, take Q&A from the audience, and it works out really, really well. We've only had one person miss their spot, their speaking spot, their online speaking spot at Note Camp, and it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise because when we had them on again, they went kind of crazy. Um, uh, they went way long, and it wasn't a successful thing. So anyway, um, but most people are really good. Um, I've vetted almost everybody that speaks at Note Camp. There's a few people I haven't vetted, but I get you know good re recommendations from people. That I don't want. Uh, I don't like a lot of sales pitches. If I don't like a person and how if they're sleazy things like that, yeah, I'm just not going to really have them on our event. And that's that's a beautiful thing is helping people learn because that's the whole focus of going to a conference. When people are spending money or taking time out of their busy lives to do that, you want it to be valuable. You don't want to be pitch fest after pitch fest after pitch fest. You want to have uh, content galore. Okay. So Cedric says already drafted. Uh, an email for the note camp email list. I've heard several people found you partners that have passed. They, they, they do. Because one thing that we do, Cedric, a little bit different, we've taken that whole contact list to a little bit different level. And one thing that we do that most other conferences don't do is a lot of conferences will have you fill out a one-page survey. And the one-page survey at like a, a noteworthy event or something like that is for them to identify who might have big pockets and they can pull them away and try to offer a coaching program on the last day. We don't do that at Note Camp. Um, do I have a coaching program, Fast Track? Yes. I may spend a half hour, 45 minutes talking about it in one episode, but it's not designed to be a heavy in-your-face pitch. Say, here's what we do. Here's what we offer. If you want to sign up for it, great. If you don't, hey, I don't need people to sign up to be successful. That makes sense. But anyway, we, we've taken that to one whole different level. We actually have a survey. We call it an investor survey that we ask our investors to find, to fill out. And it includes things, okay, like your basic contact information, your LinkedIn profile address, uh, what social media stuff do you use, how many deals have you closed in the last year, how many have you closed in a lifetime, uh, what's your biggest weakness, what's your biggest strength, um, do you have an IRA, who's that with, who have you learned from? That's one of my personal favorites. Um, and then also, are you looking to JV, yes, no, or maybe? And... That's a very valuable thing. Now, not everybody, I mean, I could beat a dead horse to death on that, but um, we, it's new every time. And what's great is we often get around 30% of the attendees to fill it out, okay? And that's for, for a survey, that's really phenomenal. I mean, because it's about, it's a good 20 questions. But it, it's so valuable. Fill out, if people fill out the survey, then we do share that the people that fill out the survey, they get extra information. They get the information in the survey. And if you got 289 people or 290 people like last time we did that, okay? <laughs> it's been valuable for some people. You can have, you will have 189 people that say they want a joint venture. They have money, okay? And that's a phenomenal thing. <clears throat> uh, as Eric Hyde says here, fill out the survey through back memory from, don't make it affordable. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I haven't activated the survey yet for Note Camp 5, but we'll get around to it. Uh, sometime in the next day or so. Uh, and, and of course, Casey says, yes, please, everyone fill out the survey. The reason we fill that out is because it, it gives us an idea to see how smart our group is, how new our stuff is. And that really helps us with future topics. It also helps us with marketing after the event. What topics do we have, need to have for Note Night in America? <clears throat> um, just, some, just some really great stuff with that. So that's the beauty of, of just a couple things. Of course, we throw everybody in the base camp. With base, base camp is... So either people love it or they hate it. Either they love it because they use it and they get all these questions and see all the comments, or they hate it because it floods their inbox for four days. Okay. I know several speakers like, please do not put me in base camp. I got way too many emails and I can't handle it. I can't keep up with them. I'm like, that's fine. We'll remove you. And so base camp is a great place where we share files and the speakers will go on there and share their PowerPoint or they'll share their, their special bonus, <clears throat> those kind of things. Um, we have been very, very big in, in putting together a, a manual, an online manual for the event over the last couple of years. We're not doing that so much this time around. One, for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of people didn't use it last time. They use it for the schedule and that stuff, okay? Um, we'll basically be using that time with the schedule. We'll have the schedule and a few flyers, but it's not going to be near nearly as in-depth. We're going to kind of lean that, that aspect down because we're using more other 
other things throughout the presentations to help people to learn a little bit more about um, our speakers and things like that with some of our social media marketing and things like that. So that's that's a beautiful thing. I, I would be admit uh, I would be um, a little light not to admit one of the favorite things of Note Camp is our social media contest. And that's a big thing that I think a lot of people don't do at events, especially the larger events, is they don't push the social media. That's a great way to network with other people that are going to events. I use this religiously at other events, like uh, Traffic and Conversion Summit or the PodFest. I was sharing posts, but I was also tracking who was posting posts about those events too, to expand my database, to expand my knowledge base, to expand my friends, expand my colleagues outside of this. So the things that I tell people to do, I do myself because it's valuable. So we do that. We promote, we give our uh, attendees some social media um, hashtags and things like that to use. And they use it. We have some amazing posts from people because we give away good prizes. We gave away about a thousand dollars in like, well, actually over a thousand dollars in electronics last year, last six months ago. Um, we give away, sometimes we give away a spot in our mastermind. Sometimes we give away a spot in our fast track training. Um, just depends. We're always changing things up a little bit, okay? Um, what's I, You guys are cracking me up here, Eric Hyde and Casey Lang, talking about donuts and stuff like that. Good stuff. I don't know. It's an it's inside joke with you guys. All right, awesome. Good stuff. But what I'm trying to get at is when you add the stuff in, when you basically, hey, you show up, you get a list of those, everybody attended. Boom, you fill out a survey. You get all the in-depth answers in that survey. You get a lot of great stuff. You know who's seasoned, who's not seasoned. It's people's strengths, people's weaknesses, what they're looking for, their top three states that they invest in. That's a huge, huge database there that's really not only valuable to me, it's valuable to everybody out there as you're getting lists, as you're connecting, as you're building your database, looking for people that can invest in the other states. Like people just, you just don't know. If you took that spreadsheet, you took the power, you took the database alone, that's a great knowledge base. But taking the survey results, after we upload them and send them out to those that fill out the survey, that is so valuable in itself because now you've got your mark. You could literally build a business on that right there. And the reason for that is that's what things I did years ago. I took into consideration that people's top markets will help me wholesale assets more. Or when I had tapes in, hey, I'm sending a list. If you want to bid on any of these, we can co-bid together. Okay. Or as I was traveling around the country, I said, hey, do you have a real estate club that you go to and plan my schedule? You can get everything that you need at Note Camp. And you can do it all from the comfort of your own home, which is the thing, one of the biggest things that separates what we do is that we live stream it. We'll have two speakers most days going simultaneously. Don't worry. If you can't make both sessions, it's okay because the fact is we do record them. And you know what? I'm not a greedy bastard. I'm not going to charge you 100 bucks or 197 or 297 for the replays after the event that shows up six months from there. Now, we take the videos, we can try to get them uploaded in the next week so you have the availability to watch them. Now, one of the other things that we're doing as well, you know, in the 5.0 version is we're going to take every episode as well and turn it, turn it in Note Camp in its own special podcast series going forward. All right. Special podcast series so that you can literally... If you can't make it, can't catch it live, great. If you watch the replays, great. If you can't catch the replays, you'll be able to download and listen to every episode on iTunes and the, the, the podcast uh, platforms out there. That's going to take a little bit longer to do, but we're pretty stoked about that. Our goal is to have that up and ready to roll by the 1st of May. Um, I'll be very busy the last the, uh, the week, the following week of Note Camp, we have our, our mastermind event in Cape Coral. So the week of the 16th through the 20th, I'll be extremely busy working to get those uploaded with our, our podetized crew, Tom and Tracy Hazard, who help us with this podcast. But we're going to have our own special version of that stuff too. So that way you can listen to it after the event. They'll be all uploaded at once for you. Yeah, it's a very nice thing. And so that's why we're really stoked about that. Um, it's, a, it's a nice extra feature to add to everybody where they can watch, you can either watch it live, you can watch it visually later on, or you can listen to it when you're on your 45 minute, minute commute back and forth like Cody Cox and a lot of other people doing that are working full-time while they're still being full-time note investors. So that's an extra thing that we're doing. Um, I, I'm really stoked about our keynote speakers. I think our keynotes are, are probably 
two of the biggest and best attractions we've ever had. And there's just no no offense to any of our amazing keynote speakers we've had in the past, but we've got two amazing women, uh, Rhonda Britton, amazing friend, uh, Emmy Award winner, just an absolutely light, a, bol a ball of light uh, out there helping people overcome their fears. And of course, the legendary and just absolutely amazing person who said she's got a big heart of gold with helping people and helping with financial education across the, the world is the the one, the only Sharon Lecter um, from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm so excited. I've been trying to get her on as a keynote for the last three years and just schedules did not work out. Almost schedules did not work out this time, but she luckily she had Thursday available and I'm like, you're done. You're booked for Thursday. We're good to go. So I'm so honored that both of these women that I call friends uh, are going to be on for an hour, hour and a half to wrap up the Thursday and Friday's uh, schedule for Note Camp. They're, they're just you're going to get a lot of notes and a lot of great stuff from these two amazing women, and that's the biggest. That's the that's the biggest thing for Note Camp this time around. We always try to have a theme, and and when we finish up with Note Camp 4.0, we want to say, what's the theme for this one? And, and it's the the light. It's the uh, the lantern. You know what I mean? It's the lantern to help you light your way to get where you want to go. And I know a lot of people are struggling out there, and a lot of people are like. With with other things, bills and life and jobs and the economy and politics and healthcare and all that stuff. And so we want to try to be a beacon of light to help you accomplish things. No, you don't have to jump on a plane. No, you don't have to spend money on hotel bills and food and away from your family. I know a lot of people, they're going to be watching from their office, playing hooky or watching from taking time off from work to listen in and watch. And we're very, very proud of those people. We're excited of those people. We're very, we're, we're thankful of all our attendees. Um, we'll be close to, probably close to a thousand by the time we wrap up registration by Wednesday night, Thursday morning for Note Camp. Um, we just, we have a big heart. We really want people to succeed. We really want people to take action. And we've changed speakers. Uh, we've added over 33%, I think 35, 40% of the, the new the speakers this time are brand new, have never been on Note Camp before. And I think that says two things. One, it's not a, it's not a knock on anybody who's not speaking. It's just that we'd like to keep it fresh, right? But it's, it's also uh, people are sitting up and taking notice of what we're doing. They're taking notice of the events that we do, and especially Note Camp and, and the uh, the social media posts, the the traffic and the things that they see and see the overall joy. And thanks to our students. Thanks for you guys that are watching for sharing your love and sharing your enjoyment of the event. Um, we're very thankful for that. Um, so keep sharing, keep sharing the love. We, we will keep rocking back and forth. We are uh, one of the a couple of things we're always very proud of is some of our students that are speaking for the first time at the event. Uh, some people have been on different panels, but we're literally giving a couple students some new, they get their own time slot because I wanted to go through their business. Yes, we've had Wayne Snell and Jay Tannenbaum and Adam Adams and Stacey Wall and a, and a variety of people over the years sharing their business models. But we're really excited because Gail Greenberg is going to be talking uh, about her mo model. We have Cody Cox going to be sharing his model. Uh, Adam Adams is speaking this time, but he should be speaking in other places too, talking about what he does with uh, Pipe Drive. Uh, to help his business automate his business. So we're really excited about those three, uh, those two guys and a girl uh, and what they're going to be sharing. And we've got some other things up our sleeves as well uh, for some big things. So I wanted to open it up for those that are watching on Facebook Live. If you guys have any questions about Note Camp. Now, Note, Note Camp's 197 I think, is what the price point is. We register online. Um, we've sent a couple emails out for different lists and stuff like that. Um, if you're a Quest client, you got a special discount. If you're a previous student, we sent an email out to our Note family last night with a discount code. Um, so, you know, there's different, some different things like that. But price does go up on Monday to $249. Um, trust me. Now, if you sign up for $197, <laughs> look, I don't care if you share that link with your wife or your spouse, stuff like that. We're fine with that. You're going to end up registering for the event anyway through our Zoom to be able to watch everything. And I, I understand that uh, Cedric says he feels like he's got a cough coming on. I may be too sick to go to work on Thursday and Friday. You know, uh, we feel that uh, several hundred people across the world are going to catch the note flu this weekend. All right. <laughs> or early next week. Uh, I'm too sick to go into work. I'm going to work from home today. Um, 
I will tell you this, this is it's become there's a lot of moving parts. I have to thank my staff. I got to thank staff. I got to thank the speakers. I can thank all those that are signing up and our students are helping promote it. We uh, uh, we've been very busy the last few weeks and it is a uh, it's hard to believe that March is almost done uh, for the year in, in two days. And where did the year go? Where's the year going? OK, um, I'm, I'm really especially proud of the, the people that have spent and attended all four of our previous note camp against. OK, um, Jim Myers, looking forward to it. Always a great event. Thank you, Jim. Love that. Um, definitely appreciate that. We're glad to have you too, buddy. Uh, <laughs> stay classy, note fam. I love that stuff. We'll have to use a hashtag note flu. Stay classy, note fam. Exactly. Yeah, you know, we may have to use that this weekend. Um, <laughs> the, the idea is, guys, we just want to deliver an event. We want to help you leverage. We want to help you leverage your time, your energy, and maximize it and make it affordable for everybody. You know, not everybody can fly cross country. Not everybody can take three days off from work with their families or four days off from their families to go to an event. We get that. This is why Note Camp is so powerful. It's why our speakers love it so much. We've actually got about five or six speakers who are speaking at a different event and take time to walk away from that event to go up to their hotel rooms and share their information with our group because they value what we do. They value, they value you guys as students. And like us, we, we just love you guys. So if you want to leverage an event, if you want to leverage taking time out of your schedule to do something, we believe Note Camp is one of the premier events that allow there to allow you out there that allows you to do that with the database, the networking before the after, the survey, giving the detailed information of those that are, who are in attendance. That's what we're here for. Um, we're really, really jacked up about that. Any questions, comments out there? Casey says, Cedric, the only cure is camping. Yes, come camp out. We might have to send a special surprise out this month with everybody. <laughs> Um, on some fun stuff. We're, we're very proud of everybody. I mean, I, I look at, and I, one of the beautiful things is seeing people's growth in the survey. Hey, I closed on two deals this year, and the next year, or the next six months, they closed on 12. Or the 12 months from the time that they came the first time, they closed on 20, 24, 30, 35, 50 deals in some cases. And so that's always a exciting aspect of that. So if you guys are looking for tickets, you're watching this for the first time, you can go to notecamp.live, notecamp.live, and sign up at that link for 197. And uh, guys, you, this is something you don't want to miss out on. Say, if you Save yourself at least 50 bucks by getting signed up this week. Um, if you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, part of the, the, the next week, you know, keep listening. I'll probably do a special code at the end here on the actual iTunes and Stitcher aspect of it give you guys a special discount code for listening a couple days late. So anyway, guys, uh, if you guys don't have any other questions or comments, um, we're here to help. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can always reach me at scott at weclosednotes.com. You can find me on social media at one Scott Carson across Twitter, Instagram, and other places as well. So, but guys and gals, that's all I've got for today. Look, you can leverage events and you can fly across country to do it. You're going to probably meet with 10, 20, 30 people. That's great. It's going to be really hard to get the whole database. Our event is the premier event that really, really takes away the barriers, really, really eliminates the excuses for you not having success in the next six, in the next 12 months in your note business. If you really want to do something big, you want to be at Note Camp 5.0, April 5th through the 8th. And yes, it's Masters Weekend. We'll be done on Sunday, probably by 3 o'clock, so you can catch the last couple hours of the final round of the Masters. So join us next weekend, and uh, or this week if you're listening on, on iTunes and Stitcher, and uh, we look forward to having you there. See you all at the top, everybody. Bye.